And and Alistair, you had mentioned as well some of the problems that that China seems to be having. You know, with with the development and this this property crisis. So could this start to cause real problems within their banking system? You know, we've recently seen that people's bank accounts were seized in China. So could this have just you know maybe been the the tip of the proverbial iceberg in in China? Well, it is. I mean, obviously, it is creating problems, and and and, and you're right in saying that there have been bank runs. But uh, the structure of the um, Chinese banking system is that um, it is absolutely dominated by the state-owned banks, um, and uh, the executives in uh, these state-owned banks are eff- effectively functionaries. They're not acting for profit-seeking shareholders. Uh, so. Um, they are told by uh, the Communist Party what their lending policies are. Um, in terms of uh, asset to equity ratios, um, they're about on, on par with America, in fact. So they're not extreme in the sense that Europe and Japan are. There is, I suppose, in that sense, room for further credit expansion um, on direction by the Communist Party. The private banks where the failures um, exist uh, have been, um, I mean, they are relatively minor in the scheme of the whole thing. So what the Communist Party has been doing is um, literally trying to stop runs on the bank by preventing people going to, you know, try and withdraw deposits. Um, The property crisis itself is significant. Um, I think there've been something like 30 odd failures, or I can't remember the number. I mean, quite a large number of failures in international markets, you know, bonds uh, backing developers in in international markets. Um, And uh, that has um, created enormous problems. You have uh, people who have, um, uh, you know, uh, agreed to buy um, off plan, properties uh, and uh, they pay up front and it's paid up front in the form of mortgages and they're no longer paying the mortgages because they say well you know if the de- developer's going bust there's no point in paying the mortgage so you can see that the crisis is uh, quite a serious one uh, the china is responding to it by demolishing quite a lot of existing unsold property uh, to create the new, as it were. I mean, this is a wonderful sort of Keynesian thing, you know. Good thing about a war is it destroys things and you can benefit from the rebuilding afterwards. That's the sort of rubbish that um, Keynesian policies come up with. And China is doing pretty much that. I think, though, uh, if you look sort of beyond this, um, I'm sure that because of the structure of the banking system and the fact that the banks are already owned by the state, uh, that um, they can control the credit side of this. Um, and I think the way I would look at um, the uh, the demand for property side is, I, you know, I think long term demand for property in China is going to increase and increase. It's just that they've got ahead of themselves. So I think they'll probably ride out this cycle. Um, I don't see it really destroying um you know the 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 the, the economy in the wider sense uh, in the way in which it would say i mean when we saw um you know the failure of of, of uh, lehman at that time i don't think it would be as bad as that um but china has also got um the problem that you know if the west uh, collapses then it does an awful lot of trade with the west and so that's something which um it would also have to ride mm-hmm. So, Alistair, you again one of those uh, big, uh, let's say, topics that you mentioned at the at the beginning here. How how will Europe deal with its lack of energy this winter? You know, could could we see European governments end up, you know, sending checks to parts of the population to help with with heating costs and energy costs, which would obviously serve to push inflation higher? Well. The problem with going down that route is that um, the governments don't have a central bank in, you know, to do that. What they have is uh, a centralized uh, currency, and they depend on uh, their funding from the ECB, basically. Uh, so they can't really do that directly. Um, they've got a real problem. And um, you know, I just have this mental image of Putin sitting there, you know, tapping his fingers, waiting. When are you going to wise up, guys? You know, get rid of those damn yanks and, you know, let's start talking. 
I, you know, that's that's and that pressure is beginning to work. I mean, it's fascinating. I was reading one of our main newspapers here, the Daily Telegraph, this morning, and uh, saying this is the um, you know, six month anniversary of the invasion of, of of Ukraine. It's also coming up to the annual parade thingy and all the rest of it. And Putin's going to want this. Putin's going to want this. it's absolute nonsense, complete nonsense. Um, <clears throat> But one of the writers was saying that um, the uh, European uh, nations need to um, strengthen their resolve. They need to stay together. They're signs that, um, you know, their resolve is cracking. That's got to be stopped. So um, looking at it from the other end of the telescope, I would say that Putin's um, policy is working. It's going to, I tell you, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse for the Europeans and us, incidentally. I mean, we... There was a um, next day electricity um, prices. Um, I saw a, a chart of uh, all the European next day European prices, uh, electricity prices yesterday, and uh, we were at the top of the list. Uh, and it's a very dramatic chart. Yeah, very dramatic. I mean, wow. Um, so we're. I mean, uh, even if we come to an accommodation with Russia, there is going to be an energy crisis. Um, but having said that, if we come to an agreement with Russia very quickly. Um, then, um, you know, it will actually soften the blow hugely and is very, very necessary. But we'll still have the food problem because food is something that's got to happen in advance. And, I mean, you can just turn on the taps again. Um, I understand that um, one of the big pipelines is down for unscheduled maintenance. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so you can see that uh, Putin is still playing these games. He's still putting pressure on Europe. He's making the Europeans' lives and ours extremely difficult. Um, and from his point of view, it's just a question of how long will it take for us to see sense? And he's not going to um, give in easily. I mean, he's not going to sit down and have long chats, you know, sort of, you know, with, you know, NATO and this and that and all the rest of it. He's not going to do that. He's going to say, no, come on. It's quite simple. I want to secure my border. What do you mean by that? Well, America, go away. <laughs> he wants he wants the the European Union to break um, the influence that America has over it. That is his true objective, and um, I can't see really that the Europeans are in a position to resist that. Mm -hmm. And you would earlier mentioned as well that you, we could see this this banking crisis unfold and it could be as soon as a month or two away does this somehow coincide with you know this seasonal demand pickup in energy as well i think it's uh, th there's a degree of coincidence but having said that um the um losses uh for the eurozone banks um, are actually quite significant uh, because um all their russian in and ukrainian interests have basically been shut down boom so that's loss um no i think i think uh, the banking crisis is 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 a deeper thing it's more about the turn in the long term trend of interest rates um i mean they've declined since 1980 down to minus figures in many cases zero in the case of the united states um and now they're on the rise and um of course everybody's got caught out by it i mean the central from central banks downwards i, mean, I don't know if you noticed but when you look at government forecasts of what inflation, you know, consumer price inflation is going to be, they're saying, oh, well, it'll sort of return to 2%. And where they said they were saying it was going to return to 2% at the end of this year, they're now, you know, they moved that out to um, sometime in 2023. And now they're talking about early 2024. They're not, they just don't understand actually what has happened. It is a turn in the whole thing. It is the destruction of the whole financial system. How? Through the contraction of bank credit due to rising interest rates. Those are the two things that are working together to destroy us. And um, I think the fact that Russia has had a pop at us over, 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 over energy um, is coincidence. I don't think, I don't see that Putin took this as, um, you know, I, I don't think he had some sort of, um, uh, you know, sort of secret information about our situation which made him act. I mean, my experience, politicians and their advisors aren't as smart as that.